Mongolia National Park is located about 90 minutes south of Sydney and contains a number of wild caves. Day use of the National Park costs $8 per vehicle. Mongonia's caves range from easy beginner caves where no specialised equipment is needed to more advanced caves which do require specialised equipment such as abseiling and ascending equipment. Maps are essential for the caves of Bungonia as caves can quickly turn into a maze. The Bungonia Cave Guidebook contains cave maps including cave entrance locations and other really useful information and can be purchased online. To help identify caves at Bungonia, all caves have a numeric designation with many caves also having a name. All caves will have their number designation printed on a small metal tag at the entrance. It's a good idea to photocopy the cave maps and take only the copies into the cave as maps get very dirty down there. Grill Cave has a single entry point and is a great beginner cave. Next is Hogan's Hole to Fossil Cave, also known as B5 to B4. This should take less than two hours to complete. There are alternate routes in this cave that can take you off course, so a map is essential. No specialized gear is required for either of these caves. However, Hogan's Hole to Fossil Cave does require basic climbing skills, as there are some climbs that are a few meters high. Before you enter any cave at Bungonia, you must register at the ranger's hut listing the cave you are entering. Once you exit the cave, you re-sign the register and enter the time of completion to show you have safely returned. The ranger's hut has a list of temporary and permanent cave closures. Some caves are closed at certain times for bat breeding, others are closed for safety or to protect their scientific value. A number of caves are also located on private property next to the national park, so it can't be accessed by the general public. Minimum caving gear includes a helmet, headlamp, spare light source, maps and a lighter for detecting foul air. Foul air is the presence of carbon dioxide at harmful levels. An easy way to get an indication of foul air is to use a lighter. If it doesn't light, it is time to turn around. Like any activity, caving carries risk, with things such as carbon dioxide exposure, bat-borne diseases and slips and falls being some of the main risks. Do your own research so you fully understand these risks before entering any caves. Also, don't forget the possibility of encountering not-so-friendly wildlife, especially around cave entrances. There is a lot of information posted at the ranger station, such as presence of bad air in certain caves, safety notices and emergency contact numbers. We highly recommend having a good read of the information before entering any caves. We highly recommend a pair of old overalls so you don't trash your normal clothes. Grippy shoes are also a great idea. There is a paid campground within Bungonia National Park which has plenty of facilities and would make a great base for exploring the National Park. There are plenty of other things to do in Bungonia National Park, such as hikes, canyoning and rock climbing to name a few. But we'll leave these for you to explore yourself. <laughs>